Welcome to this weekend's edition of Vox News. I'm Joey Gwen. And I'm Alex McKay. Driving while under the influence, a poor decision that takes hundreds of Tennessean lives annually, and the real victims are rarely the drunk ones. Thursday night, UTC held an event called Mock Reg to raise awareness and influence students to stop drinking and driving. Organizer of the event, Amber Dietz, has had enough. Basically, I know that I have a lot of friends personally who drink and drive and a lot of college students drink and drive and so I wanted to do something to bring awareness to those around to maybe make them think twice about, you know, drinking and driving because of the influence it can have on not only them and their friends but other people also. Mock Rec simulated an accident where a drunk driver was involved and showed students the graphic reality of consequences that come from drinking and driving. Lucas Abbott, a student and volunteer firefighter who has seen this before, weighed in on the presentation. It was pretty cool to see everyone come out and actually see what it is all about because there's a lot of people that really don't even give it a second thought until it actually happens to them. Trisha Henderson, assistant director for the Counseling and Personal Development Center, who helped organize the event, worked with local police and firefighters with hopes to reach more students. I think that the message was good, it was well intended, and I think we had a good crowd, so hopefully it makes people think twice before they make a decision that could really harm them or someone else. Numerous students attended the mock rec and stayed for a presentation from members from 1 and 3, a group whose mission is to raise awareness for drug and alcohol consequences. Their personal story solidified the statement, do not drink and drive. Awareness of sexual and power-based violence was brought to campus this week throughout the event, Take Back the Night. The event was organized by the Women's Center through a long process of hard work. Emily Wagner, the Violence Against Women Chair for the Board of Women Investing for Student Empowerment, explained that planning for the event was a long process, but it was for such a good cause that it was worth it. It's not talked about enough. It's not, um, it's not a topic of conversation. Um, and it really needs to be because it affects so many people on our campus, including. So we need this. <laughs> The event started with a silent auction that included items from Taka Mamacita, Ruby Falls, and Yoga Landing. The night continued with some entertainment from the local band, Bad Scout, and continued with guest speaker Kate Price, who is personally affected by sexual violence and enjoys speaking out about the topic. I love doing Take Back the Night events because it really brings, a, not only brings an awareness about this issue, but it also creates a space where people can actually talk about it. We don't talk about sexual violence, and I think one of the ways that it gets perpetuated is because of the silence. Not only silence and the shame of being a victim, as well as the shame of being a perpetrator. The night went on with a march through Fort Wood neighborhood. While students were marching, they were welcomed with treats from Kai Omega members and a song from the Mockingbirds along the way. Assistant Director of the Women's Center, Cassie Nice, said that this event is important to bring to campus to allow students to be aware of the issue. Nationally, um, the, college, the statistic is that one in four college-age women will be the victim of attempted or completed rape um, during her lifetime, and that number is not okay. And so we're saying that we're not going to stand for it, and it's time to take a stand and end sexual violence in our community and give the victims that voice to come forward and get the help they need to heal. All proceeds of the night went to Partnership for Families, Children, and Adults, the only rape crisis center in Chattanooga. For more information on power-based violence, make sure to visit the Women's Center in the UC. Temperatures have dropped for fall. Highs in the 60s, with lows making their way to the 40s. We faced a nasty storm earlier this week, but we won't have to worry about that anytime soon. Courtney Myrick is outside with a full forecast, so we'll take it to her. Hey Mox, Courtney Mark here with your Mox Eye Weathercast. The storms have finally passed and if you're spending your fall break here in Chattanooga, you're going to have some great weather. I'll let you know more in your seven day forecast coming up. This is a great forecast to share with you. Chattanooga will have beautiful fall weather for the next 10 days. Cooler mornings in the 40s and 50s, followed by a warm up midday in the 70s. 
Normal temperatures for the week range from lows around 49 and highs around 73. Our yearly rainfall average dramatically dropped with all the storms that rolled through our area last week. Still below average by 3.82 inches, but anything helps. Our record high was 89 in 1963 and 27 in 1948. Our beautiful fall weather is finally here to stay. Today, your high will be 76. It was a pretty cool morning with all of that low-lying fog, but once that clears up, it'll start warming up. Saturday, you'll have a high of 73 with partly cloudy skies. Sunday, more of the same, but a bit of dip in temperature down into the 60s. Your weekend gradually gets cooler, and then that trend of highs in the 60s and 40s at night with partly cloudy skies will be consistent throughout all of your fall break and days following. Everyone be safe during fall break and enjoy this wonderful fall weather in Chattanooga. All right, Mox, that was a look at your forecast for your fall break. I'm Courtney Myrick with Mox News. The drastic drop in temperature is testing the immune system of students. Thursday, the Perch Health Show with hosts Jake and Tim Jones of Health Services provided information and tips for students to combat the flu. Perch advisor Nicole Brown received a flu shot live on air as a way to encourage students and faculty to get the shot as an easy solution to prevent from having the flu. Good to know, Brown is in the clear from the viral infection, and she would love all to be just as safe. The Health Show airs every Thursday on The Perch from 5 to 6 p.m. You can go online to tune in at utcperch.com. Tennessee's Governor Bill Haslam's free tuition program is in need of mentors. They are a key part of the so-called Tennessee Promise Initiative to cover full tuition at two-year colleges for any high school graduate. So far, more than 35,000 high school students have applied for the program. The state's goal was 20,000 applications. However, the state has still not reached its goal of 6,000 mentors. Obento, a Japanese workshop, brought many students out to the Metropolitan Building this week to showcase the many varieties of Japanese health styles. The workshop, hosted by the Asia Program of UTC and Deborah Samuels, who lived in Japan for several years, shows students how to create a standard Japanese lunch. Students were given a presentation of what Obento is and all the healthy food groups that are in Obento. And a lot of when I wrote my Japanese speech, I learned what goes into it, like egg, omelet, vegetables, rice, and there's always a meat that goes into it. And it's very nutritional and balanced. So I think that's why, why we're all drawn to it more so. I actually learned how to make obento when my son uh, was going to Japanese elementary school. He was um, six years old in first grade, and I had to send him to school with lunch. And all I knew was peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and paper bags. And I sent him to school uh, the first day with that and an apple and cookies and uh, carrot sticks and grapes. And he came home crying, saying that his lunch wasn't cute. And um, so the next day, I put his lunch, same lunch, in a cute bag. And uh, he came home saying his lunch was not cute enough. Um, at which point, one of my wonderful neighbors, I went to her and said, how do I make bento? And she um, took me to a store, and we got this great book, 100 Ways to Make O Bento. And my son and I let him choose his bento, um, and we made it for the rest of the year. Um, and I realized, as I was making the bento boxes, um, how important visual presentation is to the Japanese. Japanese meals were compared with American meals as chefs delivered plates of fresh food for students to create their own obentos or lunch boxes. Um, one of the major differences is uh, the portion sizes. Japanese have, you know, about their portion sizes are about a third to a half of ours. And um, they eat different kinds, lots of different kinds of food, but they eat small amounts of it. They don't eat large amounts of food and everything is not on one plate. Um, there are several different plates and all the different plates have different foods. The Asia program plans on having more workshops in the near future on campus dealing with the Asian culture and customs. We were hoping to do some more and uh, we do sometimes chopstick challenge in the class and uh, I do also calligraphy or origami some and that's a Japanese a traditional culture also. The Salvation Army's Recreate Cafe will perform Walk in My Shoes this weekend and will include performers who have experienced different levels of homelessness. Walk in My Shoes is a story theater performance developed by Tanika Dai, an adjunct professor of public speaking here at UTC and artistic director at the Salvation Army's Recreate Cafe. During rehearsals, performers shared stories from their lives with other performers who then wrote monologues based on those stories. Dai coached and critiqued throughout this process to help the performers develop the most effective performance possible. 
so that's one of the, the goals of this the project in general is just to, to show empathy and have the audience to feel an empathetic um, response to the piece and and they do that just by sitting and watching you know because mm -hmm. there's because when they know that those stories on stage are real and they're not being told by the person that own that owns the story then the audience starts to think hmm well what if I was in that person's shoes what mm -hmm. would I do one performer a published poet for whose poems will be used in this weekend's performance describes what he gets in return by participating in walking my shoes a chance to reveal my story the chance to see how my story affects other people and how closely these people can identify with the words that I write. Walk in My Shoes will be performed October 17th and 18th at 7.30 p.m. and October 19th at 1.30 p.m. at the Salvation Army's Recreate Cafe at 800 Macaulay Avenue. Ticket payments are based on donations that will benefit the Salvation Army Recreate Cafe Arts Program. There is a great turnout at UTC's second annual Latin dance competition Tuesday evening in the UC Auditorium. Six couples competed and performed different styles of Latin dance including merengue, bachata, salsa, rumba, tango, and mambo. Last year's winners had the chance to announce the winners of this year's competition. Second runner-up was one of our reporters, Jenison Owens, and her partner, Ebenezer Rodriguez. First runner-up was Julian Ramirez and Abby Waldron, and first place was Allie Dickey and Blake Waldron. That does it for this edition of Mox News. Thank you for joining us. Check out our videos uploaded to YouTube. We air on UTC TV channel 2.1, so tune in and have a great weekend from all of us here at Mox News.